Before we begin, thank you very much to Malunus for joining the Patreon campaign over at patreon.com forward slash TJ Omega. Malunus uh, subbed for $1 a month, which is all it takes to help the, keep the channel going and keep the daily videos coming. So thank you very much for your support. I appreciate it. And you'll excuse me if I sound a little bit weird for this one. Uh, my sinuses refuse to cooperate today. I'm not sick or anything, just they are on revolt and they are revolting. So if I sound a little bit off, I apologize. I am working through it because we have news roundup to do. And it's a pretty loaded news roundup because we got so many toys that got revealed, including this Rise of the Beast Cheetor, our very first look at the toy that we are going to be getting for the new movie. Now, we know there are two different toy lines for the movie. There is a main line and there is the studio series. We don't know which one this is. So if we take a look at it, everyone immediately called a uh, retool of... Uh, Kingdom Cheetor, or reskin of it, because he clearly doesn't share any of the components, but he does look like he shares some of the transformation steps. Uh, so I'm not even sure how much of that I buy into, though. So if we take a look, yeah, there's a lot of things in the familiar spots. It's, it's not a cheetah pun, by the way. But it does kind of feel like it's just the way that the toy would work, because that's just the best way for it to work. The nice thing about this is, A... His tail actually has a blade on it, so it makes a little bit more sense. And he actually does have a gut gun that stores in his gut. So it took a little bit of time, but there is a Cheetor that actually includes it again. I really like the sculpting on this. Like, look at the cybernetic eye buried inside the cheetah head. He looks really, really good. Really good. This is a little bit more distracting. I can't get over this, like, he's wearing cargo shorts thing. <laughs> like, I feel like that should have been yellow. But, oh well. Can we get to the comparison shots? We need the comparison shots. So, yeah, so there is the uh, supposedly Studio Series uh, Air Razor. Uh, so it is a little bit smaller than that. So this might, yeah, so it's more likely going to be a mainline toy. Because the Studios, I want to say the Studio Series Cheetor that leaked the listing for it is a Voyager which would make this part of the main line, which kind of might explain why it leans so much more into uh, the Beast War aspect of it, because we've seen the difference between the two uh, Air Razors, and the main line Air Razor definitely has more Beast Wars influence in the design. So there's your comparison to uh, Kingdom Cheetor. You can see the proportions are different, the head's smaller. Um, it does do a few things the same. If we show the robot mode, you can see a lot of parts actually are different. The way that the rear beast mode legs work and transform are different. He doesn't have nearly as much shell uh, covering up over his shoulders. Uh, his shoulders don't seem to stick out as far. You can see like they're like the chest is a little bit wider to uh, connect to them a little bit better. And uh, yeah, there's just a lot of little changes. Like even down to the pelvis section does not have the same uh, elements to it. Uh, yeah, I don't think this is a retool at all. I think it borrows a few ideas, but for the most part, it looks like it's going to be a different toy experience, which is really cool. So that is our Cheetor, and it looks really good. I'm actually kind of excited to get a hold of that one. Now, if we move on from here, we do have some other leaks that showed up. Uh, this one, everyone, I think, said Studio Series Frenzy when they first saw it, but no. This is Freezer. Uh, no, it's not a Dragon Ball Z villain. It's a Terracon. And apparently it is something in the weaponizer category because it just turns into a weapon accessory for a larger figure. So, super simple figure at that. Don't know uh, what role he plays in the movie, if any. Uh, but he's not really exciting. Like, the more fun one is we got Core Class RC, which is a pretty simple figure. Uh, not unlike, uh, it's been pointed out, uh, not really unlike uh, Energon RC. So there seems to be a little bit of uh, design influence from that version of the character. Uh, it doesn't look bad. It doesn't look bad. Like, she's got a bunch of hanging off of her, and she's core class because she's much closer to human size in the movie, so that makes sense. Uh, and yeah, yeah, um, it's not a bad little figure. Kind of eager to get my hands on this one, too. There's a lot of stuff coming out of Rise of the Beast and the toys, and I'm actually kind of surprised how much I like the look of. 
Um, let's see. Let's uh, let's keep going with the brand new stuff that sh that people have gotten in hand. We have the new Legacy animated Prowl. Uh, we've seen this one before, but this one is a much more in-depth gallery of it. Uh, as we can see, he doesn't have the long proportions that the original toy did, so he doesn't not quite as lanky in the right spots. Uh, but he does have the bulk you would expect of a G1 style character, and a lot of the important design elements are there, right down to the tan um, motorcycle shorts, uh, uh, like a motorcycle cop short thing. Uh, that's I think it's a weird element. It's a weird element, but it is iconic of that prowl, so that is good. So the, look, the overall look of the figure is much cleaner and better than, say, you know, the bulkhead as well. Um, yeah, and the knockout. I would say, yeah, this is not a bad take. I do wish the head was a little bit smaller because it does seem a little bit large on the body. And uh, that's basically it. Everything else, like, I can deal with, I'm fine with. Um, vehicle mode, again, vehicle mode looks fine. A little bit cobbled there in the middle, but overall fine. Uh, it does harken back to the original well enough. And, yes, he comes with his ninja stars, too. So, uh, yeah, I'm actually really, really looking forward to this one, too. A bunch of toys to look forward to. Imagine that. Yeah, and hopefully if we get more animated characters, it's more along the lines of this style because I definitely think they, I definitely think they came a lot closer than they did on the Prime toys. Moving on, how about something a little bit easier? Uh, cross cut is revealed. We have, uh, yeah, we have the mouth plate version of the head along with the silver and the red color scheme. It's the it's the skids mold again, so no real surprises here. It's just like officially confirmed. This is what it's gonna look like. And the weirdest thing about this crosscut, red wheels. Okay, you tell me where I can buy red tires, and then we'll talk. But it's, it's a weird consequence of the mold choices, I believe. Uh, but yeah, this is what it's going to look like. It's not bad at all. You know, the silver is really good, works well with the red. Overall, yeah, not bad. Um, it's just It's just a simple repaint. Yeah, we've even seen this head sculpt before with the burnout version of the mold, so nothing really exciting going on. But for you fans of the mold, one more to look out for. Are you ready for something besides the toy reveal? Too bad, I got another one. We've got a gallery for sl uh, Slug in hand. Now, when Sludge was in hand, everyone went, oh no, because we got to see how they were handling uh, being the pelvis section of the new Volcanicus. It didn't go well, so here we actually have uh, Slug, who's the torso, and looking a lot better. He looks like he fared a lot better than his uh, brethren did. Uh, he does have this weird little weapon that hides Volcanicus's head. Um, not sure what kind of gun it is. Use your imagination. Uh, stubby little arms in robot mode. I think that's probably the only real downside here. Otherwise, he doesn't look bad. Doesn't look bad. Triceratops is okay. A little bit gutted in the middle, but it's core class. Uh, so we're not going to harp on it too much. It does look like he sacrifices a little bit of articulation in order to be a more solid combiner. You can see where there's no elbow joint to his arms. Uh, so it's, you know, it's whatever at this point. Then the torso mode actually looks really good. It's a way better torso than Volcanic Scott the last time. All right. So I'm going off of that. And yeah, um, if this is an indication of where we're going, it should be really, really cool. It should be better. I never was a fan of the first Volcanicus. I don't like the idea of the Dinobots combining in the first place. I thought they were cool because they could fight a combiner without having to combine. They were that strong. Wasn't that what was cool about the team? I don't know. I don't think every team of characters needs to combine. That's the thing. I thought the Dinobots were above that. But if they have to... This doesn't seem like it's going to be a very bad depiction of it at all. I'm trying to see where the I'm trying to see where the arms slot in. Uh, there doesn't seem to be like because it's all. I guess it's just on that peg because it's all supposed to be done in five millimeter posts on this on the com, on the combination sequence. So I guess it's just that peg on the elbow. All right, so once again, we wait in eager anticipation. Amazon has been shipping a lot of these things out really. Uh, quick and early lately, so maybe that's if you got your pre-orders there, uh, maybe be on the lookout because some of this stuff might be hitting a lot earlier than we expected. 
All right, and you're not going to believe this, but uh, we have another gallery of an upcoming toy. Uh, tra uh, trail break. Why did my brain go? Uh, Thundercracker this time. And again, it's just a simple repaint of the Starscream. We don't really have to discuss it that much. There's not a whole lot to talk about. I think the biggest talking point here is he actually has the right guns. They didn't give him a stupid slingshot. He has his null rays. The ones you see on Skywarp over there are custom painted. To this day, we still do not know how or even if we are going to get the null rays for Skywarp. And it seems like a pretty big oversight. I hate... It happens with Skywarp a lot. I tried to make a video out of it, but there's not enough instances of it. But it seems like Skywarp is always the odd man out when the team gets uh, done incorrectly or uh, done to not match well. And I don't understand why. But it's always Skywarp who gets screwed over. Uh, hopefully, we get a reissue of that toy at some point that has the Null Rays. Uh, or hopefully, Thundercracker actually comes with the Null Rays and we just haven't seen them yet. One or the other. It's weird. It's disappointing. But hey, you got one more Seeker for your tiny collection. Alright. <laughs> more toy reveals. It's just going to be one of those weeks. All right, so this is the Alpha Starscream from the Authentics line, our very first look at this version of the character. Um, so remember, Authentics is the cheapest of the cheap brands. They are thin plastic, very hollow, very simple engineering and articulation, but they are made for an extremely affordable price. So this is the kind of thing you'd find at like, uh, like lower end markets, you know, your Walgreens and like even like your family dollars, etc., uh, and it's just there to basically just be a Transformer toy for the lower markets. So, not really meant for collectors. It's something that you get cheap to to keep your kid from screaming when you're leaving a store without a toy. Uh, it looks okay. Uh, it looks okay as a uh, evergreen star scream can look. Uh, transformation is super simple. It's basically just... You know, it's basically just flip a few things over and peg the arms down to the sides. Um, it's the only thing that really gets me is like the shoulders are sitting like strangely low on it for some reason. That's a that's a weird thing, and I don't think they needed to. I feel like they could have done. I feel like they could have done something about that. But hey, I know people who collect these, so you got one more, um, and that's not even the only one, because now we have the Bravo size class for Authentics. Uh, I, I'm getting really tired. <laughs> I really just wish there was like a consistent naming scheme to sizes. So Bravo is apparently going to be the first Authentics that is closer to core class in size. You can see on this photo how small the box is in this person's hand. Uh, but you can see, uh, yeah, he forms this cute little Optimus Primal. Is tiny little gorilla man. Uh, nothing really too complex or weird about him. Um, yeah, he's got a you know he, he's hunched over gorilla mode. Uh, robot modes there. It's now now remember. I mean, it's Optimus Primal. It's a very simple change and transformation to begin with. Uh, so you're not really like reinventing like wheels here. I will say, it actually for its size, it actually looks pretty good. Like, surprisingly good. The weapons are even removable, so you can put them in his hands. It looks dumb, but more importantly, you can take them off the gorilla mode if you want. And yeah, uh, with some with some good paint on that chest and head, like, with some actual, like, attention to the deco, I can imagine a customizer making a really nice, tiny Optimus Primal out of this. Uh, it's, it's cool. It's actually cool. Now, I don't expect any of them to look better than this as we see more because obviously Primal's transformation makes this easy to do. But it's actually kind of cool that they are going forward with uh, the smaller size. This might actually this actually might make some interesting things. We will see. I mean, are you sick of reveals? Are you sick of reveals? Are you? Are you? Good, I don't have one next. <laughs> No, uh, what we have here is uh, a computer listing. We have a new store listing for a Buzzworthy Bumblebee that is the Studio Series Voyager Rise of the Beast Alpha, which is the code name for Optimus Prime. So for some reason, uh, Buzzworthy is getting a version of the Rise of the Beast Optimus Prime toy. 
no clue why, but you're gonna get a second version. You're gonna get a second version of that toy somewhere down the road. Altered color scheme, most likely. Maybe battle damage. Maybe G1 accurate. Maybe like original movie accurate. We don't know. We don't know. But uh, it, we're just we're just letting you know uh, because you might just have a second opportunity to get it if you don't like it when it first came out, or you didn't get your hands on it for whatever reason. So keep an eye out. All right, so now we're, we're past all of the toy reveal stuff, so we can move into other things. I'm kidding, there's another toy to reveal. Flame Toys. Uh, we're doing a new model kit, and this time it is Soundwave. I think we previously saw this in prototype form. Now we're seeing it in full color. Uh, the full press release thing for it is out. Looking really interesting. So it's definitely got some of the more anime aspects uh, in the design that this toy line seems to go with. Uh, very puffy in some areas. It's almost Pat Lee in nature. Um, it's it's an interesting take, but it's not bad looking. It's not a bad looking sound wave by any stretch. Uh, looks good all over. Uh, keep in mind, it's just a model kit. It's not going to transform or anything. It's just a nice. Uh, it's it's just a it's just a, it's a nice like slightly modified take on sound wave, and it comes with a rat. It comes with a little ravage. And the little Ravage looks so cute, and I wish there was a big, sh bigger, like, close-up of Ravage, just because it kind of looks adorable. Oh, man, I, I, I want it. There's no, uh, there's no opening door from what I can see, so, uh, yeah, you, you just have a little Ravage that can just hang out with Soundwave. I think it's cool they included some cassette, even if it's, you know, like, it's, I think Laserbeak is the one that everyone goes to, even though Buzzsaw is the one that came with the original toy. Uh, but I think Ravage is, for some reason, Ravage is just the go-to. And I, in this case, I kind of feel like it's because, uh, he, they don't have to, they don't have to create a red sprue of plastic just to get laser beak in. But it, no, this sound wave looks cool. Um, might add it to my, uh, model kit collection. I'm trying to build more of my model kits, so I might run out and need another one. Who knows? All right. So we got a little bit of behind-the-scenes stuff on our Legacy Evolution scrap hook, our brand new deluxe Junkion. Uh, we can see where this is the design process, ladies and gentlemen. Here's a Mad Max vehicle that they have sliced like a piece of cake to demonstrate uh, how they wanted the uh, disassembly and the weaponizer element to work. Same with the arms. You can see over here. This is like literally the cheapest Photoshop you can do just to show like what we would like to do with this toy line. Um, it's interesting to see like that is like the the how like they start creating these and look at how simple the original artwork is. It's literally just scribbles in the vague shape of what they have in mind. This is the first time Scrap Hook was created, and it's fascinating to me to see how like. Because I think there's so many people out there that think, like, you know, like, in order to design a Transformer, you've got to have, you know, art and engineer degrees, and you have to have this incredible drawing talent, and this, like, mastermind of figuring out where parts go and all that. This is just where it starts. <laughs> like, you, this is how easy it is uh, in the initial stages. You can see the evolution of it. Uh, we have what's probably going to end up being a repaint of him down the line. You can see elements that kind of cross over between these two concepts too, like the colors and overall shape here. You can see the the one-eyed part, you know, aspect of it uh, that went into the final version of the robot. See, yeah, this nice little mix is what it became, and then it became asymmetrical, which was in the original scribble. And then, yeah, like it's pretty fascinating. Like I think so, anyway. So, yeah, more of that. There's a designer commentary thing, too, but just like a lot of it lately, it's just nothing but fluff hyping the toy. So read it if you want, uh, but I think the design process is neat. All right. Uh, speaking of designing and drawing on Transformers, uh, Ken, uh, Ken Christensen has shared some of the line art from uh, the Transformers Magic the Gathering cards he worked on. So I guess if you want to go uh, do coloring book with Blitzwing here, you can do that, I guess. Um, it's, 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 that's a nice little look. And hey, isn't it nice when we can actually credit the artist Hasbro when they're actually allowed? I've seen like artists for the toy, for the box arts, to, like, you know, we, uh, we'd really let's say on social media, say like, it'd be really nice if we got to, uh, if we, if we got to tell people like the artwork we worked on. 
like are you scared that the artist isn't going to get any work if you if you are you scared hasbro of like other people hiring the artists uh if you if you reveal who it was i mean if you want to keep them on staff give them a contract give them guaranteed work you know what an artist craves more than anything is guaranteed work <laughs> um but if you still want to freelance put their name on it so they can get some other work somewhere man it's really unfair it's really unfair but no, you got a nice little selection of the stuff he worked on. Uh, and, uh, you know, this, which is the forest land card for the magic set. This is just super cool. I, I love the look of this. The idea of a Cybertronian forest. Yeah. All right, let's wrap it up. I don't really have anything super weird this week. However, if you're in the Sydney Zoo, uh, I presume the one in Australia. Uh, let's see. Yeah, uh, Tar... Or, Taronga Zoo, Sydney, uh, is doing a Rise of the Beast promotion, uh, and nothing weird, you know, it's, uh, y y like, y uh, you, you get a little, you, like, you get little trinkets like this, you get little trinkets like this, you get a map, uh, featuring, uh, Bumblebee and Optimus, and little, like, Transformer hotspots you can visit and go to, uh, you know, uh, exhibits that are, uh, matching to some of the characters from the movie, you know, like Rhinox over here in the green, represented by a, a, an elephant. You know, you have Rhinox turns into the elephant. You know, no, never, never mind, never mind. Uh, it looks like there's like a little like, go to the spot, find the word, translate it from the Cybertronian code. It's just like a little like a, it's a. If you know what a stamp rally is in Japan, it's like go to this spot, get this thing. Congratulations, you fill it out. You get some trinket at the end for filling the whole thing out. All right, so yeah, it's a fun little thing to do if you happen to be in the area of that zoo. Kind of a kind of a strange one, but hey, we'll go with it. And that's gonna be all the news for the week. Tons of new toys to look forward to. That's gonna make the thumbnail really easy to make for me. Thank you, everyone, for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you've caught up with your news for the week. And as always, I appreciate you watching. I appreciate the hit, hitting the like and subscribe before you leave because that is super important. You know, all that stuff. And as always, I will see you next time. Guys, I am facing the most powerful enemy any YouTuber can face, the algorithm, and I need your help to defeat him. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. Every time you do, we attack that algorithm and we drive it back until it can no longer defeat this channel. Thank you very much.